first place to start would be, um, I'd love to hear about the connections that you all maybe feel or <laughs> experience right in this work. I, I could say some things, but you know, given um, Ralph's incredible um, history of working with movement, but also with memory and place. Um, and Brandon, actually, I mean, I've, I've known you for a long time. This is a very different work that um, at the same time has um, some signature really powerful tropes that I've seen before in your work, but especially with regards to movement, there are some things happening in it that I haven't seen before. So I'm both asking you all to talk about the connections that you see or feel between your work, and I'm also now telling you the connections that I see. So I'm going to stop now <laughs> and let you all take it from me. Uh, I mean, I guess I should start. I don't know. You just let me tonight. But, uh, but I, you know, I, I um, I mean, I also, I'm like a fan of Ralph's notebooks and mm, yes. the, one, the, one, the kind of art mm -hmm. notebooks you kept during the Geography Trilogy. Mm -hmm. I moved here in 2006, so I actually only caught the last installation of it and I saw the initial two on video. And there was just something about the ideas that you were grappling mm -hmm. with about being like, you know, it's like trying to live in a conceptual place but kind of constantly being marked in some way mm -hmm. by your race or having to kind of battle this kind of avatar of yourself that, you, that sort of feels mm -hmm. like a ghost you're constantly mm -hmm. eluding in some way. So that, 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 that impulse I, I find kinship with mm -hmm. um, in, in the work you've made in the past. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, I didn't actually see uh, How Can You Stay Home was the long one that was at Pam. Mm -hmm. um, but then I found out that he did actually play a Br'er Rabbit in it, which was really weird. Yeah. That was yes. actually very serendipitous. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we yeah. kind of leaned into that as yeah. we moved through, moved through the process. Mm -hmm. um, did that help? <laughs> the, I don't know. What, the what sonic ghost. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, just sort of. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. It's no, hardly no, to ask. You know, or no, I think it. that's great. And, and, and I'm wondering, Ralph, well, for you, you know, are there are moments, as a choreographer, as a masterful choreographer, um, in addition to being a cultural theorist and um, someone who thinks about sound and space and bodies and race in, in particular ways, do you find a conversation at work between your work and Brandon's work at that level? Yeah, I guess in, in how, like, um, purposefully confused mm. it is, <laughs> in the sense mm -hmm. of race, mm -hmm. right? just this, like how, I mean, for me, watching, like, the, the relevancy of, like, how we are with it today, we, mm -hmm. we can sit here with so much privilege mm -hmm. and really create these meta like structures mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. When what you're making, what we're making meta structures about, are abstracting was so horrible mm -hmm. and so simple mm -hmm. in its horror, mm -hmm. right? Or the injustice of it, mm -hmm. and that the gap mm -hmm. right, between like art and actually being a slave. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I'm watching Twelve Years a Slave, which yeah. I thought it was a really good movie, but like so not profound mm -hmm. when I actually think about like what a black slave body mm -hmm. like um, how they you know how, how a body found a location mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. within a certain kind of geography mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? it's not theater it's not mm -hmm. art You know, and it's like that's just completely. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm completely in awe of like that we can do this now. Mm -hmm. You know, we can laugh about like this crazy shit that was going yeah. on, right? I, I mean, I do want to. I do want to. I was sensing and tracking on laughter from at different moments from different parts of the theater. So I, I am really interested in that. Um, I think your work always demands your audiences to work really hard. Also your cast, who by the way were phenomenal. I'm just extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I like the fact that, um, Ralph, you, you used the formulation metastructure because maybe that's another way of thinking about 
the kind of interventions that Brandon is making to these 19th century texts, right? So 12 Years a Slave, very particular kind of adaptation, right, of an 1853 slave narrative, which was ghostwritten, by the way. That's a whole other right. thing that doesn't get <laughs> talked about. Um, but the way that you structure, you know, this production such that you have largely, right, the archival text intact, but then these, you know, really um, challenging, provocative framing devices. Um, I'm, I'm interested in hearing you maybe take us through your, your use of um, blackface as well as whiteface, which actually has a tradition of its own in African American culture. There's a great book called Whiting Up by Marvin McAllister, if people want to know about this, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, how you, what you do in kind of the intestacies, I never say that word right, but of the play, the margins of the play, to then give your audiences the tools to to work with that archival text. I'm, I'm interested in how you're thinking about that. And, and Ralph, I, I, I see that in your work too. So maybe, you know, if you could also speak to the ways that you collaborate with your audiences to do critical work with the text at hand. I mean, I think part of what we're flirting with is this idea of like experience and sort of what, what like art making is supposed to be about, but somehow that's like the thing we're mining constantly and trying to sort of like transubstantiate into another experience for people to feel a heightened sense of being with, you know? Is that my sound, am I stopping from sounding crazy? And, you know, uh, and, and I find that like that, whatever that transformation is very intense or puzzling, somehow I'm always kind of trying to understand what that is. And, um, and, and sort of like what, you know, I, I'm obsessed with the original play, which I may have encountered it in your class, but I can't remember if yes, I did. Yes, you did, dear. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> like 10 years ago. But you know, there's something. <laughs> she told me that before the play yes. started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'm like giving you these 19th century texts and saying, here, please, do something with them, help us. And I, you know, and I don't know why, I don't know why it always sort of stuck with, like the, the play has always stuck with me because it was about, I mean, Buchiko was like a man of the theater. He is yes. someone who like actually, you know, history has really done him very a poor disservice. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, he invented actual forms and ways of looking and he actually yes. introduced sort of melodrama yeah. as a form yeah. into the English language, <laughs> yeah. French. And I was yeah. just always thinking about like, well, this is like our idea of like an artist. This mm -hmm. is someone like a, someone who's, who is innovating in form mm -hmm. and like creating new experiences. And, mm -hmm. and there's something about just like the, I had, this, I had this moment with the Octoman where I realized that, um, you know, everyone writes it off. You know, they always write it off. They kind of did a revival of it, kind of very sincere revival of it seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized that actually, in the original play, he has this cast list where he, you know, he, there's like 20 slaves in the original, and he specifies their skin color. Right. And I was always like, why does he call her, why does he do that? And I realized it was because it was an ensemble of white actors putting on blackface. Mm -hmm. And that there was something about, but he was also, mm -hmm. But he was also taking it a step further and actually trying to complicate what you were seeing. Like mm -hmm. he was, there were there were white actors mm -hmm. with different shades mm -hmm. of blackface, and well, that somehow, oh, keep going. yeah, but that's somehow <laughs> like creating a, like an, uh, you know, was, he was obsessed with kind of, he yeah. he wrote the play in response to like Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was like yes. a super popular, right. very important piece of literature mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. And he was saying like, I find that play sensational, mm -hmm. and it's not a real depiction of the South. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is provide like an authentic experience right. of what slavery really is. Right. And I find that an amazing challenge yeah, to yeah. do for right. for anything that you right. try to do in life, right. like right, a, right, right. you know. Yeah. And yeah. so and so that so I was just like, okay, there's this impulse to like make theater feel real or to mm -hmm. give, for the theater to give you a real mm -hmm. accurate depiction of someone's life or, mm -hmm. or experience mm -hmm. and essentialize mm -hmm. something, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's when I began to like think about, um, about just this face paint somehow being a stand-in for a person. And, mm -hmm. um, and I did, you know, I made this play Neighbors, which was yes. actually like a very vivid exploration of blackface. Yes. Um, and I thought, like, well, what is like the step beyond that? You know, he also in the original play like cast himself as Wanati, so he would right. put on red face every night. Right. And I realized it had a lot to do with, you know, he's Anglo-Irish, which mm -hmm. is a very specific kind of Irish mm -hmm. who are kind of viewed as middle class and educated. Mm -hmm. And when he went to London, you know, he was sort of when he toured the regions, everyone was like, he was an actor. He, they would say, oh, you can't even tell he's an Irish. You can't even tell he's Irish. Right. He's like a, totally English, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and then when he got to England to perform, people were like, this guy sounds completely Irish, you know. Right, I think right, he right. kind of had a funny complex about yeah. these stereotypes of Irishness in his right. work, and that's why he cast himself as this like mm -hmm. the clearest stereotype, like mm -hmm. an illiterate drunk, you know. Mm -hmm. I think these. And I was just like, there's something about mm -hmm. like he was playing with the tension between like what you see and what you what 
you're being told you see. And yes. I don't know, so that's how I kind of began to back into the like, the, the face question yeah, somehow, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's really, you know, focused on technologies of looking, right? Right, and, totally. And, and, photo, yeah. Right, and, and authenticity, right? Realness versus spectacle, right? right? I mean, right. he becomes like a master of spectacular melodrama, right, right? Right, But in order to produce these kinds of new knowledges about how we think about race and Right, body, totally. And he's sort yeah. of very much leaned, I mean, melodrama was all about sort of short visual shortcuts to yes. tell a story. And he, I think he was very sensitive to and this is kind of what the theater is, mm -hmm. like the ways and how much we rely on sight to tell us right. what we think we see yeah. and how we don't actually pay attention to those processes, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and that's what melodrama exploits mm -hmm. is that you immediately assume something is real because right. someone says it's real, right. you know. Right. And, um, and, 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 I, and also I thought about the fact, you know, then I, then I had this realization where I was like, oh my God, right, the mm -hmm. entire experience of this play mm -hmm. is <coughs> that there's a white actress Saying mm -hmm. I'm black, mm -hmm. his and that's wife, the, his wife, Robinson. right? That's right, and that's Zoe. like the, that mm -hmm. is like the that is the essence mm -hmm. of your confusion as an audience member back then. Is mm -hmm. like you're like, how can this be? You know what? Right. You know, no, right. no, she looks white. You know, right. it's like, right. it's, like right. it's about how we as, like human creatures like fight what we see. Somehow right. we can't ever quite match up what mm -hmm. we see with what we think we see. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah, I want to come back to her, right? Mm -hmm. And and also again, just an extraordinary performance. Um, but, you know, Ralph, I'm wondering, you know, how you, you know, come to the table thinking about realness and spectacle and masquerade in your work, how you play with that. We could talk about the bunny suit, which you've worn in, in a really, a brilliant piece, which I had no words for. I think you recall, I could not talk to you after that um, performance, but, um, you know, how do you play with um, masquerade and these um, presumptions about authenticity? Um, well, it was kind of, it really came home to me tonight in my own work watching this mm. piece that it's so unreliable what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I, it was coded very clearly, mm -hmm. like, like Zoe's black and mm -hmm. she's playing a white girl who's a doctor, and, but she can and George. Can we put scare quotes around all this? Yeah, but <laughs> she and George are, <laughs> single cat she and George are <laughs> black and really, but you know, now they're not, and mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Like I think, you know, talked about in the early, you know, 19th century, this idea of, you know, the multiple consciousness that you know, sort of black people in particular sort of lived in, mm -hmm. and how that's really expanded, and mm -hmm. and it's really become our existence, mm -hmm. like what we see. So all of it's kind of fake, mm -hmm. but not really. You know, and I think that's what I'm left with. Mm -hmm. So what's that dance? Mm -hmm. Calling attention to constructions of race. I mean, this text is from 1859. But it's hard to land yeah. as well. Right. It's not yeah. so simple. Right, before. yeah. I mean, I mean, it, and then know. what do we do with that? Right, right. What do I do with, what, what do I do with my own watching? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and not trusting. So then it's, right. you, know, you can open it up and it's like, very cool, okay, so you can't call anything anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, so then what do we start doing? Like, right. and then then it feels kind of generative. Like, we can start like finding new names mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sort of deal with each other. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, that is beautiful. I mean, that that's again, I think one of the tools and the gifts that you know you your work gives to us, Brandon, to work around the edges of the the play, the margins of the play, to push back at that kind of. Um, you know the the hegemony of, of you know right, of racial discourse in the play because we know that even though Busico is critiquing and opening up the questions about you know how these categories are fixed and constructed at the same time he's still participating in this tradition right. that produced these kinds of racial binaries right so um, where can we go with this there's so many different directions I want to go with um, <laughs> um, actually maybe let's talk about again in terms of trying to think about what the what you give the audience to do to make these mm. interventions, right? And the dominant play, let's talk about the sisters <laughs> who, who are extraordinary, who are obviously not from the 1859 text, right? So, right, right. So, you know, can you talk to us about how you came to that and the use, the work of anachronism? I mean, we know that in, say, the neo-slave narrative tradition, especially of Ishmael Reed, Flight to Canada, um, from 1976, or Oxfording Tale, Charles Johnson's narrative from the 1980s, that 
there are ways that anachronism works in black satire to really intervene in what we think we know about slavery. So yeah. I'm interested in how the, the women work in this for you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, the characters actually do exist in the, in the original, and there's actually, you know, mm -hmm. I was right. more functional because I was like, right. I have 20 people. Like, right. how in the world am I going to get them down to, right. you know, to three people? Mm -hmm. um, and I felt, what I felt that was weirdly not explored in the, in the play is that we were only seeing house slaves, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, and that I mean, they were literally like, you yeah. know, out like literally 16 feet away. Yeah. There were probably 30 people getting like yeah. beaten and yeah. you know, the yeah. and sweating, you know. Yeah. And so I was like, God, that's so interesting that these are just house slaves. And then I felt I also like I really struggled with, and I do kind of in all my work where I try to like play with history, but I couldn't. I kept trying to like figure out how to write a slave dialect, and I just felt and I felt like I was. Being as fake as mm. you know, Bushiko, Bushiko mm -hmm. was because his whole thing was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how slaves really were. They were not really unhappy. Some of them loved, you know, in the original right. play, they all Pete kind of rallies them all and tells them all to sell themselves to save the plantation. Right. And it's all about how fun these slaves. They just loved their life because right. it wasn't that bad, you know. Um, <laughs> and like you know, they're all get running free the potions, yeah. you know. Anyway, yeah. and uh, and I remember feeling like, like why am I sitting here trying to? capture what a slave felt. You know, the tragedy of slavery is that like scores of existences were rendered completely unknowable and, and sort of uh, blank, you know? Um, and so I was just like, what? So I'm gonna just make them talk how some of my friends talk and then how I talk, you know? And like, you know, and it, cause it's about, cause ultimately for me, the way I, the way I found my way into the conversation was about, it's about work, you know? It's like, yeah. and how work transforms people. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that work is forced on you, and sometimes you choose it, sometimes you're paid, and sometimes you're not. But, I, and I sort of tapped into that, just like the gossipy banter, mm -hmm. like being in a cubicle, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of clowning around with people. And that sort of is what opened up, opened them up for me. And then I have to say, there was something, I definitely started leaning into Minnie's voice, you know, in a real <laughs> way. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there was something about, like, I was thinking, you know, I like loved the Housewives of Atlanta, you know, it's like, there, but there's, and it's like, and I used to be ashamed of that, you know what I mean? Because it's like, this is, you know, these yeah. people make money, they are happy, they right. are not complaining about their lives. And yet, most people would feel, like someone came in a few nights ago who like, was very disturbed by the way they talk and felt mm. like I should be, mm. you know, a, a common kind of critique I get, which mm. is like, you gotta take responsibility for these stereotypes and mm. it's bad. And I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't think these women deserve to not be on stage. Mm. You know, what are we saying? What are we, how are we, why are we being like the black police? You know, so I felt like a little bit, you know, I felt, so am I crazy? So I just thought, so that's where they, so they sort of emerged for me. And, and, but at the same time, the tragedy of them is that they don't know anything other than this life, you know, and that's, and it, you know, not every, so, so my family, you know, we're like descended from slaves, obviously, and we're scared of sharecroppers. And we always talk about how like, you know, nobody, Harry Tubman did not come by our plants. You know, we, my family wound up in Arkansas, like picking peanuts for 150 oh, we're years. We're from Arkansas? Are you from Arkansas? Oh my God. I'm from California. But my <laughs> Arkansas. Arkansas. Oh, that's great. Anyway, oh, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. So, but, yeah. you know, we were just, my family always jokes about just like, yeah, we just like hung out. You know, no, you know, nobody. So we're like, we have to go now? Oh no. You know, this, but this idea, like, you know, for every like story about like heroism and every right. kind of like, you know, right. Every 12 years of slave, there's probably 80, there's something more banal about the evil of slavery right. that, that is, that's more, that, that actually captures a larger experience in yeah. some way, you know? So that's where I kind of found them, maybe. Um, I realized that, I don't know, I just feel like they oddly, they're the ones who, they actually don't get to live on a boat, you know? <laughs> so, you know and that's, I don't know, they, they, somehow they still survive, I don't know, they just, and they just like feel like they really in the play for me in some in some way, yeah. You know, I also sort of sorry. I'm really talking. No, but you know, there, you know, the, the famous thing about the plays is there's two endings: one for England and one for America. Yeah, they're very distinct very endings, distinct. and your ending is different from that from, too. Yeah, from all of that. Yeah. Well, I wrestled because between the two of them, yeah. I was like, I don't know which one to choose, and I was like, I actually kind of don't care if Zoe dies. Right. So you know, Zoe, Zoe, but, and the U.S. production <laughs> dies, and we could talk about the ways in which that um, really anticipates and actuates the tragic mulatto tradition in which you have to kill off the mixed race character in order to separate the races. Mulatto um, comes the root as mule, a mule is an animal that can't procreate. It's a white supremacist construction. Mm -hmm. So she dies in the 1859 US production. When it goes to London, the audience actually rebels and like, no, save Zoe, no! Right. So she ends up living, right? right. right. But, but here, something else happens. Right, right. I mean, and that has something to do with like, 
colonial subjecthood and how that was viewed and like uh, what you know what yes. it to breed like anyway. right. but uh but I don't know I just sort of was like I could I can't, I could not figure out an ending at one point I had like seven endings like I was just yeah. going all all over the place and then I just sort of realized that you know mm-hmm. Zoe can do whatever she wants I, I want to know what, if these girls get on this boat yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> like, you know and I also mm-hmm. felt like there was something going on with Dido mm-hmm. it's like she's just depressed you know mm-hmm. she's just depressed mm-hmm. and she worked with a mean woman mm-hmm. for forty years now she's becoming that woman and. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I just felt for them in some way, and so I gave them yeah. the end of the play, oddly. Yeah, I mean, I appreciated being able to have that space in which to really open up their characters, right? I mean, I do feel like there is a sort of familiarity in terms of the types, right, that you are producing, and then to push back against that, and I could kind of hear the audience, you know, having different affective relationships with those figures, so, you know, I think... I thank you for that ending mm-hmm. to kind of problematize, right, mm-hmm. what we think we know about them. Mm-hmm. But Ralph, you Can know. Can I speak to that? Please, this, this please. I, I, I loved them. I thought they're, they, they represented something very beautiful to me. Mm-hmm. I just finished Sadea um, Hartman's. Hartman's. Which one? The piece on Venus. Mm-hmm. Oh, the piece. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thomas, what's his? What's Venus and two acts. Venus and oh, two Venus acts. and two Okay. Well, she talks about the yes, silence yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. of, yeah. you know, these yeah. African women going through the Middle Passage. Yes. And, and these are black women who became slaves yeah. and have no voice. They're yeah. literally invisible. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. I'd never thought about, like, a black mm-hmm. body like that. Mm-hmm. And all of them were like that, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Mm-hmm. And I felt like these three women were... In, in this really amazing way, the future, mm. right, mm-hmm. of that. Right, They're, they are the futurity in the ways right. that they are they able are, to they articulate. Are, they are the evolution of that science, yeah. and yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. I couldn't wrap my head around that, yeah. but they embodied that so perfectly, yeah. so it was this amazing revelation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like there's this gap of nothing, mm-hmm. or silence, mm-hmm. and then what, mm-hmm. and then this. Mm-hmm. Nina Simone's four women, yeah. right? the trajectory, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I, yeah, and it was like, you know, I felt like I kept wanting to critique, like, mm-hmm. how the fun, how much fun it was listening to them. Right, right. And I couldn't. <laughs> it's like, this is real. This is like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like now and the truth. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and there was some of that then, so maybe there wasn't complete silence, right. you know? Like, maybe yeah. that's my own mythology of a, a kind of horrible situation. Yeah. But no, that was there. Yeah. But that it's so fully formed now. Yeah. So and audible. Right? And audible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And kind of all about language. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And then the language, langu- that language becoming their bodies. Yeah. Or vice versa, mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about bodies before we wrap up. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe we have to wrap up. Do we have to wrap up? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Very quickly, we should probably talk about your body um, <laughs> in the play, both as it, you know, as your figure functions in the narrative, right? And also the choices that you made to participate, right, in the production. <laughs> we could also, if we had more time, we'd talk about Rare Rabbit or whatever that rabbit is and the folklore foresh- foreshadowing that you refuse and lots of lots of different places we could go but I'm, I'm interested in your figure um, and especially given the fact that you know the most famous scene in Octoroon for those of us who <laughs> work on it and kind of obsess over it, Sadia Hartman's written beautifully about the Octoroon, Joe Roach, um, they both informed the way that I ended up writing about it, but we all go to that scene where she really has to you know, tell George how to read her body, right? You know, to really, you know, be able to read race a certain way, right? So given the ways that this text obsesses over reading, right, blackness and reading black bodies, how do you, how, what was the way that you approached putting yourself into this narrative? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I tried to like always splinter it, you know, the minute mm-hmm. it came, the minute it came up, like I felt, <clears throat> I mean, the prologue for me was a, was oddly about like watching this thing recede from you, mm-hmm. you know, before mm-hmm. you realize it, it's mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, yeah, it felt right to like put like a black man body on stage, mm-hmm. and then suddenly, suddenly he transforms into something else. Yes. And you're not totally sure how he transforms yeah. into something else, yeah. and then that transforms into something else, and that becomes the play, and somehow the yeah. play kind of folds out like this or something. Yeah. 
Um, so that's so that was that impulse, and then like I, you know, it's funny. Like I didn't, I actually did not intend to be in the play, <laughs> um, but oddly, but we kind of kept it would come up a little bit in our design meetings because it felt like a big question I couldn't get over was. Yeah, you know, obviously I'm looking at this question of like what an author is, you know, and how that relates mm -hmm. to my life and like who wakes up in the morning and like takes a shower and, you know, you know, takes out his trash versus like the person who, you know, critics feel they, they can analyze or decide who I, you know, and like what are those people, you know, and are they all me or is one of them really me and is one of them like a fiction I'm building and I'm always kind of thinking about that. And um, But then we, you know, we had this moment in, with Sarah, it's not here, it's, the director, is a collaborator. She, you know, she was like, it's sort of strange that you have a character that is you saying that they're gonna act, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and somehow you mm -hmm. kind of excuse yourself from the world of the play. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really profound. And that led to very profound discussions about like, well, what is that? What does mm -hmm. that mean to like, to keep my voice but not my body? And like, mm -hmm. is there a way in which I physically mm -hmm. interact on stage and interact with the, with the space? And, mm -hmm. um, and this, and you know, this rare thing kind of, is a confluence of various things that were happening, uh, and it kind of made sense. I wanted to feel, I wanted to announce myself as an animal before I announced myself as a person. And what did that, mm. what did that feel mm. like? You know, um, wow. so I don't know. I don't know. It's still kind of, you know, the first question everyone asks is like, what's what's going with the rabbit? You know, and I'm like, I don't really know, but you know, we sort of we sort of like figured it out. You know, so well, inhabited. It's just, you know, these things happen. And, uh, I, like the, I like the costume. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, you get all these questions and you have to say something. Yeah. So, so for me, it was just easy. It's like, it's the un unreliable narrator, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I can just, it's a, something I can hide behind. Mm -hmm. Ralph, can you just briefly describe the performance? Oh, yeah. In reverse. Well, no. <laughs> it is. I mean, it'd I have the like, language for it. It'd be like asking rather than describe what's happening in this play like, no, in a few minutes. Um, I can't really. I mean, it, it, it's about like everything that I'm interested in right now. I think that's kind of one of the crazy things I'm trying to do in my own work mm -hmm. practice is everything, every absolutely everything I'm interested in mm -hmm. is in a work. And then I think that mm -hmm. kind of becomes like it's meta-ness or mm -hmm. you know why the work is maybe a little dance and maybe a little theater and maybe a little visual art and maybe about just writing and maybe about just asking mm -hmm. questions and maybe it's about race and maybe not and because I feel like that's my existence as a modern mm -hmm. human being mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I have the opportunity to kind of be able to have support to do that and then mm -hmm. share those share that kind of um, um, mosaic with an audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, no, like completely. <laughs> but it, 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 it's about, the works are, are about so many things that it would be really hard to kind of find a locus. One of the things that we didn't get to talk about that I'll just flag for us as we wrap up is that fourth act, meditation on the fourth act, and um, one of the most moving things that I see in your work and I saw appropriate or appropriate, whichever way you want to call it, it's one of the most extraordinary plays I've seen in a long time. I did not have language for you after that. Um, you remind us of these histories that are, to quote my colleague Joe Roach at Yale, um, forgotten but not gone. Mm -hmm. And those images, um, you know, challenge us and the power of the work of the both of you is to remind us of this long tradition of how black folks have used performance as a way to manage um, these kinds of histories, right? And to speak back to them. Um, and it's a beautiful, powerful, ongoing project um, that I feel deeply honored um, to be able to engage with every time that I see the work of each of you. So I want to thank you both before I start crying. And then, you know, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you.